Welcome friends! If you have played mods in 7 Days to Die, you have probably seen the 7 Days to Die mod launcher. An awesome piece of technology. Oh, it never breaks. No, no, no. It's joking there. But it's been a really good way to install a bunch of different mods. However, it's been updated. There are now actually two versions of the mod launcher. This is the old UI that you might be familiar with. And there's a new UI and there are pros and cons with both of them. But I've uh, done a bunch of videos for how to install mod packs using the old one. And people on my last video were commenting that, hey, you know, I, I have a different version. It looks entirely different. How does this one work? You make a video. And I thought, OK, let me go have a look. So let's go over to the new mod launcher. And to get that, we have to go to 70 days to die modlauncher.org by Sveri, who has done a full refresh of the software. Just scroll down, blah, 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 and then download it and then extract it and then run it. Once you've downloaded the zip file and you've extracted the zip file, you get something like this and you just double click and you'll be able to run it and it pops up. I have had a bunch of problems with it well, because it it sort of violates some of the general software, proper software uh, uh, for me, the development where it forces an update. So if it actually decides that there's an update, it's going to automatically go and grab it and install it. You have to restart. And sometimes I've actually had it where it just asks me to restart and then it checks again and says, yes, there's another version. And then it checks again and said, yes, there's another version even that I, I just can't get out of it. And that's really frustrating. I wish it would allow us to say, do you want to update? Yes or no? Because if you don't want to update, just go back, run the software that you have installed. That should be working. You might not have all the latest bug fixes, but that's OK. But anyway, so this is how the new version looks. And it's sort of similar the way it works in that you'll be able to see your installs and everything. There are some basic settings if you want to change where you install that you normally just leave it and there's actually not that many options anymore so let's take something like darkness falls we go to install an overhaul and we go down to darkness fall and we can see all the ins instructions here and there is no buttons there's like nothing to click it's basically just install and uh, and I have this really weird, it says allow you to reinstall the game. It's like, yeah, and you can download it from Steam if you want to, meaning it's going to take the base vanilla game. It wants to put that in a folder and then download the mod and then extract the mod on top of the copy that you have. So it's not going to interfere with the existing game copy that you have. Now, I normally don't download from Steam because it requires you to put in your username and password, which really shares that with Sveri. Not that I'm saying he's doing anything bad with it, but you generally should never do that because, you know, someone could be hacking the version of Mod Launcher and then they're siphoning off people's password and username, which is really, really bad. So I always install it locally to my PC because of course I play the game, so I have it. And then I do copy from local. And this is where it normally is. Unless something has changed, you could browse and uh, go select somewhere else. But this is where you normally end up having your install. And then you do a start copy and it will copy things over. It doesn't really say much beyond that. It, you know, this, that this is not really a good progress bar because it doesn't tell you what it is. But this is going to take a while. It's basically going to take those 10, 11 gigabytes of your vanilla and copy it over to a new folder, which is going to be under 7D2D, Alphas 20, Darkness Falls, Darkness Falls. And then it's going to ask you for some further steps to take. So we're going to have to wait here for a while. But while we're waiting, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you hit that like button and maybe subscribe, ring that notification bell. I really do appreciate everyone's support when it comes to making all these videos for you every single week. And if you really want to support, there is Patreon as well, patreon.com slash videoe42, that you can pledge and become a patron. Or if you prefer, you can become a YouTube member as well. Just below the video, usually on the main channel page, there's a join button. You can become a YouTube member. And either way, make sure you join my Discord. And if you are a patron or you're a YouTube YouTube member, even a Twitch subscriber, you do get a nice role in a nice color as well to signify that. So that is really appreciated. Being a supporter also gives you access to some additional of my game servers that I have available for my community. But do check out my Discord for that. And here it finally gives us some information what it's actually uh, doing and uh, it talking about that is actually downloading darkness falls and deploying it. So what it first goes to do is goes to grab the Darkness Falls zip files, 
from the location that Kane has defined and provided for his uh, or his mod pack and Kane is the, obviously the author of Darkness Falls, awesome, awesome developers and awesome job with Darkness Falls. So it will download all that, but that's a number of gigabytes. I sort of do prefer the previous version where it would actually tell you what it was downloading, you know, which package it was and how much, uh, uh, how many uh, gigabyte it was downloading, all that things. So you could see how many files it was and the progress and everything. Here you basically just have to sit and wait. I mean, it gives, gives a little bit of information, but it's not much at all. It doesn't tell you how far it's gotten as far as the download. It doesn't tell you how much left is there. And it basically means that you're just sitting here waiting for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever. It can take quite a while. Eventually, you'll start seeing all this stuff where it's updating files and it's copying things over. And this is, uh, this is again, good information, but it's, it really doesn't tell you very much other that something is happening. It's like, oh, 100% updating files. So it's done. No, no, no. It still has more things to do. Okay, so it's 100% out of what? Like, you, you, can, you can go down and just scroll around here and it's just like, okay, so 100% done. But... 100% done doesn't mean it's actually done. It just means that it's done with something that you have no real reference to, which is a really peculiar way of informing the user. And that took a sweet minute, I tell you. I've been playing a few rounds on my mobile phone here, as a mobile game before I got to this, because it takes quite a while. Okay, so now we are we're completed, and it switches over to this. I, it actually, it's really interesting. It doesn't go like, you're done. All right, next step is to do this. It's like, it just simply switches over to this. And this is where... It's sort of similar to the previous one, where generally you just do play. If you want to update, you can update it. You can tell a little bit of more of, again, the information that you saw previously about current mod version that you have. This is not always accurate, uh, unfortunately, if the mod creator doesn't update things properly because Darkness Falls 4.01 can actually run on 20.3, which is the latest vanilla as of this video. Uh, but it does tell you where it's installed. But generally, all you need to do is now just to play and it should be telling you yes 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 i'm gonna uh, allow the app to change things and it'd be starting up bump pimps coming up and there we see we now have darkness falls install 4.01 using the new mod launcher so we're back here i'm gonna close this i'm gonna reopen it yes i'm leaving already close it and then i'm going to reopen it and this is where it does that uh really unfortunate check it says yes i'm checking for updates i'll let me look through make sure it's just like no don't do that only update if i tell you to do but now now you can see that the new mod is actually down here and i wish he would separate it and say something like i uh, currently installed mods because it says installed mods but then it has you know all the options this is actually not installed ops this is just options this is the first mod that it actually has installed but now if you click this when you come back to this and if you want to install another overhaul let's say you want to do wolf the walkers you can do that let's you want to do a gna mod sorcery etc you can also do that as well and close because we're not going to do that but if you just want to play darkness falls after you've installed it again oh click here and then hit play and you're into the game thank you for watching it's really simple we've lost a bunch of the options that we used to have where whether you should go and um, update the registry whether it should be putting the save files in the local files uh, to this mod launch install and a bunch of other things in there that we no longer have an option to change unfortunately the good thing though is that if you do have the old version, you can actually still run it. You can still use it. I don't know how long it's going to keep working with installing mods. It does work as of this, but uh, at some point it, it likely is changing things so you can actually update and uh, and uh, keep using it. But for now, I believe both of them work. I prefer this old version because it did have more options, such as let's say you're installing something, it'll let you choose some options that might be useful for a power user, but maybe a normal user, you're better off using this. If you do have issues, unfortunately, you don't get a lot of information about it. Then it's back to going to the mod launcher creator or to the mod developer, neither which are always going to be able to provide you a lot of information. If you do run into a lot of problems, one, I would make sure that you're checking the version requirements of vanilla so that your current mod version will support it. 
Sometimes they don't, and then you have other problems. If it still doesn't work, try to just remove whatever install you have, you know, delete everything and then reinstall. If that doesn't work, try to just re-download the mod launcher and do everything from scratch again, and hopefully that will resolve it. If it doesn't, again, go to Sveri or go to the mod pack creator and ask them for assistance. But thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. See you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.